good afternoon. Things are a little different in this video, I guess. I'm at one of our local county parks, just enjoying a beautiful day. Today's video, I'm gonna touch on relapse and how difficult it is to get back into the swing of things after a relapse. Sometimes I think it's more difficult than coming in for the first time. So we'll talk about that here in just a moment. So the thing that I want to touch on today is relapse. I want to uh, take a look at it from a different angle this time. Relapse is, uh, is not an option for me today, um, but I know others who have. And I have in the past uh, relapsed, and I, and I know what that feels like. Um, relapse is completely different than getting sober for your first time. Uh, because you have experienced what it's like to be sober and, and, and you've experienced that spiritual way of life that uh, is just second to none. And, and now you've messed it up, you know. Um, that feeling that it gives you inside keeps you from getting back to the rooms. Now, that feeling comes from a lot of different areas. One is, you know, what are they going to think of me? What are they going to say about me? Well, uh, I have to say that whenever I've seen someone come back after a relapse, the thoughts in my head are not, oh man, what a goofball, or, you know, what a dummy, um, you know, you've got a lot of nerve showing up here. No, that's not the, the attitude that people have. The attitude is, oh my gosh, thank God you made it back, you know? I'm so happy you're here. It's good to see you. Um, you know, let's get back into the into the swing of things, man. Let's get back into recovery so you can start feeling better about yourself and, uh, and the world around you, for that matter. You know, what I have found is that relapse immediately cuts off my uh, connection with God. Um, it's like it's a conscious disconnect from God. When I relapse, it's a conscious disconnect from God. And all of a sudden, I'm not even considering what God's will is for me. Um, you know, it's all about me and saving face and, and not looking bad in front of my, my peers in the, in the rooms. And, uh, you know, oh, beating myself up. Oh, I have totally goofed up. My whole life is completely gone again and you know how am I ever going to get this back it'll take me forever um, you know I had um, I don't know I, I had some time in the program and now I got nothing um, all of those things that I said in the rooms they don't mean anything at all to anybody well let me just tell you if you have relapsed and you're struggling trying to get back into recovery none of those things that we tell ourselves are true what I have found is that if you had two years and you relapsed, you still have the two years of knowledge, of experience, of being able to be in recovery. So don't kid yourself into thinking that just because you relapsed that none of that makes any difference, because it does. <music> So getting back into recovery, in my mind, is harder than coming into recovery for the first time. You know, you're coming into recovery and yeah, you, there's some fear involved, you don't know what's going on, you don't know these people, uh, you're not even sure that you even want to be in recovery. But coming back holds a lot of, uh, a lot of anxiety behind coming back. And I want you to know that we don't think any less of you or anything like that. Uh, we care about you, we love you, and we want to see you back into recovery, living the life that God intended for you. You know, once you get that conscious separation from God, it's not a good place to be. 
because now you've separated yourself from your support group as well. And, and we're, we're sitting here waiting for you to come back with open arms. We want to see you recover. It hurts to see you out there just making things worse. Because those feelings that you're having, what do you do to cover that up? More of the same. And that's, that's not the answer. If you've been in recovery and you've relapsed, you know what recovery feels like. Come on back. We need you. Whatever it was that caused you to relapse, please come tell us about it. We need to hear that so that we don't do it as well. Your story is important to us. You are important to us. And we want to see you recover. Yeah, when it comes to relapse, believe me, I know what I'm talking about. I did it for a long time. I've been in and out of recovery for over 30 years. And I have about 16 years of sobriety. So that tells you, in 30 years I've put together 16. So when relapse happens, it's not the end of your recovery. In fact, it's an opportunity to experience a recovery like you never had before. One of the things that I've learned about recovery is that it's not just like this. It has its ups and its downs. When you experience those, those down times, and, and those down times are like uh, when, when you've lost your connection with God, uh, you're not feeling good about who you are anymore. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe you've stopped going to meetings. You know, I've heard of people that stopped going to meetings and they remained sober for some time. But going to meetings is one of the big ones. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've asked somebody when they come back after a relapse, so what happened? Well, I stopped going to meetings. That's one of the big ones. Those meetings, and I don't understand it. I don't understand why those meetings are so important, but they are. You know, it keeps us not only connected with other people, but it also keeps us connected with God and with the program of recovery. The program of recovery requires me to be a part of rather than a part from. And, you know, being out there wallowing in some relapse that I had is not going to solve the problem at all. So for me, I have to get right back into it. Um, swallow my pride. Let that pride go. Forget about the ego and just do it. You know what needs to be done. You've been here before. You've experienced this before. And you know that these are the best friends you've ever had in your life. Why are you not answering the phone when they call? <laughs> Why are you not returning texts? It's not because you don't care about them or that they don't care about you. It's because you're allowing your ego to get in the way of getting back into recovery. That, that little thing called an ego, it's a three-letter word. But man, can it be powerful when it's preventing you from getting back into recovery. So don't allow your ego to get in the way. Come on back. We love you. We care about you. We want to see you recover. You know, I can't help but take this thing kind of personal. If you've been watching my videos, you know I had a couple of friends that had relapsed. You know, I can't help but, but care about these people. Um, you know, I've seen them make this major, huge, miraculous comeback in their lives. And then some little thing that they either did or stopped doing caused a relapse. And now they're the only ones that can make that first big step to get back into recovery. 
and say, forget about my ego. It's time to save my life. The only way that you're going to be able to get back into recovery is to have courage and willingness and that desire to get sober again. I beg of you, please, come on back. We need you, we love you, and we want to see you recover. So come on back. Leave the ego at the door. You don't need that here. We want you to be able to be happy, joyous, and free.